one moment in time, they were the biggest boy bands in the universe. Backstreet Boys and NSYNC, global heartthrobs and rivals. Backstreet fans were mad. They're like, oh, we can't have another group like this. Some girls loved Backstreet Boys and hated NSYNC. You have Coke and you have Pepsi. This was not the Cola Wars, it was the boy band wars. Both bands put together by record producer Lou Pearlman. Hey, we signed a contract, let's move forward and let's make a lot of money together and let's make this thing happen. A hit maker who'd later end up in bitter litigation with the young men he made into stars. I was in the biggest band in the world and selling millions of records, but I can't even afford my apartment in Orlando. And worse. I could have emptied the federal criminal code charging him with, with different violations. Lou Pearlman was an unlikely entertainment mogul from Queens. He first made his money by selling advertising space on blimps before moving into the charter flight and helicopter business in the 1990s. We flew Paul McCartney and Wings, Rolling Stones, Phil Collins, Madonna, and lo and behold, new kids on the block. I just didn't know who they were. And I was just questioning, how could these kids afford an airplane? And I was told, these kids did $200 million in record sales and $800 million in touring and merchandising. I was like, I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> In the early 1990s, New Kids on the Block were the biggest thing in the world, and teenage girls went bananas for them. They were everywhere. They were dolls. They were towels. They were lunch boxes. The huge success of New Kids caught Perlman's attention. He spoke to Chris Cuomo on 2020 in 2000. I was invited to come down to one of the shows. All the screaming. I was like, my God, what's going on here? I said, I think I can do that. I think I can put a group like that together. He was living in Orlando, Florida, where a lot of young talent was auditioning for roles at the theme parks. So Lou puts an ad in the Orlando Sentinel, which reads, producer seeks male singers that move well between 16 and 19 years of age, wanted for a new kids type singing dance group. One by one, the boys came in, AJ McLean, Howard Duro and Nick Carter. I like the sound, but I said to him, you really need to have five-part harmony. Kevin Richardson was playing Aladdin at Disney World. Kevin came into the group and recommended his cousin Brian. So that formed five guys together. I put the money out to help them. We give them choreographers, we give them vocal lessons, we provide tutors. I think I'm a great cultivator. I mean, they call me Big Papa. Lou does give himself a nickname, it's Big Papa because he's got it all covered. He's taking care of all of it. The band became Backstreet Boys and started making appearances, like here on Channel 6 in Orlando. What is your name? I'm AJ McLean. Make some noise for the Backstreet Boys! And then Lou books them at SeaWorld, which is, of course, a big attraction in Orlando. <laughs> Perlman makes a video of the SeaWorld performance and sends it around to people in the industry. Next, the group went on a tour of high schools. They would do three shows a day in three different schools, and they would bust out on the gym floor, and the girls would lose their mind, and they had never heard of them before. But they couldn't land a record deal until Jive Records said yes. Hey, we signed a contract. Let's move forward, and let's make a lot of money together, and let's make this thing happen. When he signed a record deal as a manager with the Backstreet Boys, he not only made himself the sixth member of the band so that he would get paid what they got paid, he also paid himself as the manager. Why is that so important to you, to be called one of the band members? Well, one is I share in the uh, income. Money, is, money, money but, aside. But, money but, aside. But Backstreet Boys is a part of my life as much as it is theirs. They had the band, but they still needed a hit. We used to call America No Fan Land. For that, they turned to Swedish producer-songwriter Max Martin, who in 1997 co-wrote Quit Playing Games With My Heart. Quit playing games with my heart. As far as boy band music videos, the template was set by Quit Playing Games With My Heart. Quit playing games with my heart. Five boys begging a girl not to break their heart in the pouring rain. They became huge in Germany before breaking through back home. Please welcome the Backstreet Boys. Backstreet Boys. To the delight of their screaming fans, the boys do rounds on talk shows like Regis and Kathy Lee. 
I mean, we hoped that we'd be successful, but we never imagined this would happen. Meanwhile, while all of this work on making Backstreet Boys a hit is going on, Lou is thinking, hmm, this is a good idea, and someone else is going to come along and try to copy this idea. Why shouldn't that person be me? Unbeknownst to Backstreet Boys, Perlman set out to recreate their success with another boy band. At that point, I'd known Lou had the Backstreet Boys. You know, they were out doing it, and I was like, if this guy thinks, you know, he can help me out in any ways, I'll meet him. Chris Kirkpatrick had the idea, but Lou, Lou backed him and made this happen. When the Mickey Mouse Club stopped production, Justin Timberlake became available. The first thing Justin suggested was one of his friends from the Mickey Mouse Club, JC. And so Justin kind of brought JC into the mix. Then Joey Fatone joined, but they were one guy short. So Justin Timberlake's vocal coach said, I know this guy in Mississippi, and it was Lance Bass. In Mississippi, no one ever dreamt of being a successful musician. It just was kind of out of the cards for someone like me. Until a phone call changed his life. So I arrive at Baggage Claim. There's 14-year-old Justin Timberlake looking real cool and sly. <laughs> then you have Lou Pearlman, and they pull up in his Rolls Royce limo. And that's how I'm introduced to this whole world. The five became in sync and would go through the same kind of boy band boot camp as Backstreet Boys. It was so hard, and it really took us months to focus on that and learn how to dance without being out of breath. I used to come watch and be there to make sure they're getting the best training, that they're getting pampered with every possible need. That was what I did. So the first show we ever did was a showcase we did at Pleasure Island, and we just did some of the songs that we had. Like Backstreet Boys, NSYNC needed a record deal. Every record exec out there turned us down. They're like, eh, eh, nothing like this would ever work in America. This is way too cheesy. It always amazes me that NSYNC took almost the exact same route <laughs> to fame as Backstreet Boys. They too went to Europe. They too went to Max Martin to record. Max Martin writes a song for them, which is called I Want You Back. And then they get a big break in the States. A Disney Channel concert special in 1998 that Backstreet Boys turned down. It was incredible. And that one gig right there, to me, is what made us in America. And the Disney Channel plays that concert over and over and over and over again. Creating a rivalry. Backstreet fans were mad. They're like, oh, we can't have another group like this. Almost from the beginning, lines were drawn. Some girls loved Backstreet Boys and hated NSYNC. And some girls loved NSYNC and hated Backstreet Boys. They can move like nobody else. They're better than Backstreet. Backstreet's nothing compared to them. I love you, you rock! Yeah! When Backstreet Boys found out that Lou was the manager behind their greatest rival, they were outraged. With the competition between the two bands heating up, both bands soon learned that Perlman was holding out on the fortune they expected from their fame. It all just hit me. I was so disappointed. I ripped up the check like I did. I knew something was wrong. When we come back. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.